Welcome to the McNeese Labor and Employment Podcast Series. This podcast will address five steps to effectively manage workers' compensation claims by Denise Elliott, attorney at law. Ms. Elliott practices in the Labor and Employment Group at McNeese. Thank you for joining me to discuss the five best practices to effectively manage workers' compensation claims. Although Pennsylvania's Workers' Compensation Act is over 100 years old, the act is often misunderstood and misapplied, with employers not recognizing all of the intricacies of the act and the rights it affords them. Even for the most seasoned HR or safety professional, managing workers' compensation claims is tricky and baffling. Combine the act with the web of state, federal, and private benefits also available to injured workers, and it is enough to make your head spin. We're here to help. This three-part series will discuss the five best practices for effectively managing workers' compensation claims. One, look at the big picture. Two, don't rely too heavily on your adjusters. Three, utilize a team approach, including field nurse case managers. Four, don't be too quick or too slow to terminate employment. And five, look for creative settlement solutions. In this part, we're going to focus on number one, looking at the big picture. The rights provided under the Workers' Compensation Act are part of a larger web of benefits afforded to injured workers. This benefits web consists of the Workers' Compensation Act, the Family and Medical Leave Act, the Americans with Disabilities Act, unemployment compensation laws, Medicare and Medicaid laws, collective bargaining rights for union employees, and employer-provided benefits and protections, such as extended medical leaves or employer-provided short-term disability insurance. Simply, workers' compensation does not exist in a vacuum, and claim management must consider all parts of the web. Let's take the Workers' Comp Act, the FMLA, and the ADA as an example. When an employee claims a workplace injury and is removed from work as a result, the employee may be entitled to benefits under all three of these acts. So what is an employer to do? First, report the claim to your workers' comp administrator or insurance company. Second, analyze whether the employee is eligible for FMLA, and if so, the employee's time away from work should be designated as FMLA qualifying. Workers' comp leave and FMLA leave can, do, and should run concurrently. Unless, of course, you have a policy or a collective bargaining agreement in place that says otherwise. Third, the employer must abide by its duty to engage in the interactive process required by the ADA to determine whether the employee can work with or without some reasonable accommodation. The web can get complicated. Accordingly, it's important for those managing claims to consider all parts of the web. Thus, if you use a safety manager to manage workers' comp claims, that safety manager should be talking to and coordinating with human resources at all times. Coordination is key to complying with all applicable laws and to avoiding unnecessary liability. Next time, we'll discuss best practices two and three, employer participation in claims decision and the utilization of nurse case managers. Until then, if you would like more information about workers' comp claim management, please call me at the number on your screen.